The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series from Bristol, presented by Pennzoil Platinum, brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands? We have been under the red flag after a multi-car pileup blocked the racetrack. Now the red has been rescinded. The field again motoring around under the yellow, though pit road not yet opened. Clint Boyer has been on pit lane, though, uh, while it was still closed. That bubble boy in the race to the chase needing a little bit of work from his crew and uh, trying to get a head start on that with these quick caution flag laps that happen here at Bristol. Now, we heard Clint Boyer's frustration a little earlier. Frustration? Well, he's not the only one on the radio. This is Casey Mears. Proper. Clear. 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 Okay, okay. I wasn't clear. God dang it. And that as you heard from Casey Mears as well, out of the car a moment ago, led to the big mess that swept up, among others, the nine car of Casey Kane, one of the drivers oh so close to trying to lock up a place in the chase. Pit road is open, and it looks like uh, the front runner is going to choose to stay on the racetrack here. And, and so now that the field has cycled around through a little scoring loop, let's check those race to the chase standings, and we're going to find that nine cars paying a price. Yeah, he is paying a price right now, but Alan, the biggest thing these guys got to do right now is get these cars fixed, get them back in the racetrack. Even they're going to be off, get some points back. Take a look at Reagan in the top 12 right now. I tell you, Brad, that's a big move for that kid. He's been running good all night long. He has been very consistent. And the scary thing is Clint Boyer drops out of sight. He's down to 14th position right now. He's got a lot of damage to that race car. He's got a lot of work he needs to do. It's going to be a long night for that 07. Remember, David Reagan started last in a backup car. He's running 14th now. We'll track the repairs on Casey Kane and Clint Boyer's machines when we come back to Thunder Valley. Getting set for the restart here at Bristol, Tennessee. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series action at Bristol. And for you Jeff Burden fans, folks, the news is not good. He is officially retired for the night. And right now that car being shown in 40th position, that would be his worst finish of the year. Only a second DNF and a tough one for Burton here with three races to go before the chase begins. Kyle Busch leads him down on a turn four. Carl Edwards in pursuit. Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, and Tony Stewart. That's a top five. Matt Kenseth got the free pass this last round. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is now moving closer to getting that free pass. He's got a few more cars to get around before he gets a position. And you can see him there on the high side trying to take one of those spots away from uh, one of the guys that he's racing. With Kenseth back on the lead lap, that puts just 19 cars on the lead lap. There have been just three leaders thus far tonight, three lead changes. Pole center Carl Edwards there in the 99, led twice for 53 laps. Kyle Busch has led the last 170 laps. The other lap leader, by the way, Jeff Gordon for a single lap. Carl's looking pretty racy right here. He's able to keep pace with Kyle Busch. Yeah. You know, Joe Gibbs Racing was in the news this week for other reasons, but right now they've got their three cars in the top five at Bristol. Dave? And guys, you know how teams scan each other to hear what each other are saying. And Carl wondered during that stop if Bob Osborne had heard anything about the 18 car. Bob said, you know, not really. They're just about the same as us. Well, I think that might have encouraged Carl that we can get him in his condition. It's the same as us. Battle heating up for third position. Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, Tony Stewart is there. Boy, how quickly things can change uh, to 24 and 11, having miserable finishes at Michigan a week ago. Jeff Gordon finishing 42nd. Denny Hamlin so frustrated, and they roar back here at Bristol, both running in the top five. You can see Jeff Gordon move up the racetrack. Denny Hamlin's trying to make his car stick down on the inside. This has been a tough pass for everybody all night, but Denny's been able to, to make this work coming up through the field to get himself up to fourth spot. See Tony being real patient behind these guys. Also saw some smoke from underneath the 20 getting in the corner. That's a like splitter hitting the ground. When these guys run these fast lap times with good tires. You'll see that. While these three battle here side by side are down, that's allowing the front two to get away a little bit. Now Hamlin gets enough grip to pull up alongside the 24 car. Can he get by, though? Yeah, he made a really good run off of that corner just a minute ago. It looked like his car's really fast. Oh, 
long. That's, that's exactly same, what happened a while ago. That's the same thing we saw a while ago. These guys just by inches. Whoa, and you see the 20 car going for the racetrack. And Jeff Gordon, Gordon was almost sideways again behind the 20 car. He gathers it back up. Well, they kind of used up the 24 yeah. there for a minute. They didn't mind doing that and went on and <laughs> looked like Jeff just had to get completely spots. out of the gas. 88 car behind him there. That's Earnhardt Jr. He's being shown a lap down in 22nd position. You see the 12 car of Ryan Newman coming into the picture there. He's in sixth. He's had a good race car for most of the night, but on this set of tires, his car wasn't as good on uh, on the start of the run. So it's going to be interesting to see. He, he was really fast as we, we got a lot of laps on the tires earlier. I heard Jeff say he better be ready. I don't think he was happy about this move right here. First, he got cut off by the 11. Gets a little nudge from Tony. He's going to get a bigger one right here. You know, there were 11 cars that didn't fit under that caution. Andy, with all the debris that was put down on that racetrack from the wreck, I bet there's a lot of crew chiefs worrying about picking up something and getting a flat. Yeah, you're right, Alan, but they spent a lot of time cleaning that racetrack up. I was watching the cleanup, and uh, they, they've had a lot of trucks, a lot of vacuum vehicles out there, and they didn't roll the cars until they cleaned up the track. They threw that red flag right away, so uh, they may have a chance of being okay on that deal. Jeff Gordon now starting to move away a little bit from 12 car after uh, the uh, Ryan Newman had reeled him in, but now Newman falls back into the clutches of Kevin Harvick, and that's the battle right behind him. There's a 12 car, and Harvick now trying to make the pass on Newman. He has to get uh, woed down behind Tony Raines in the 70. Yeah, that's where Newman's car was really good the first couple of runs. He just doesn't seem to be have it right yet, and, and maybe he's waiting on uh, those tire pressures to come up a little bit more before his car comes in. So we see Kevin Harvick to, uh, trying to, to go around Tony Raines in the 70 car here. We heard Harvick made some adjustments on his car earlier. He said he was too loose. They took a rubber out, made him a little bit too tight, so they've had to make some other adjustments. But we still have just over half of the race to go, so they'll have a couple more chances on pit road to make some more adjustments to it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is now within one spot of being in that lucky dog position. 07 car, Clint Boyer. There's a 22 car. Good run for Dave Blaney, who was uh, all the way up in the top 10 a moment ago and is being shown in 16th position. Uh, look at the bubble tracker there, David Reagan. You see he is now 12th overall in the points, coming from 43rd starting spot. Let's up, update the 07 of Cliff Boyer. Jamie. Well, Doc, when you look at the 07, he looks just fine, but he actually had severe right front fender damage. He also knocked the toe out. The team had to come down pit road three different times to pull that fender off the tire. The good news was the splitter was intact. The bad news is his toe is still off. That steering wheel is not sitting straight. They desperately want to come down for a fourth pit stop, guys, but there's just too much to give up as he sits 13th in the point. Yeah, Jamie, they've done a great job of getting this car fixed, and he is very competitive. They may still can work on it some more and get it better if they can fix that toe. Andy, I can, I can actually look at the right front tire on the 07 car when it comes at just that last camera shot. It looks like he's got a, a lot of toe out. Take a look at that thing. Oh, yeah, he definitely does, Russ. You yeah, can see that. It's definitely towed out, so that's really going to wear the inside of the tires. I don't know how much longer he can make it, but he can probably get away with it for a while, but that's definitely going to cause the car to uh, not handle right, that's for sure. And you can really see those brakes, that DJ, glowing on the outside there, that 07. Yeah, it's probably car's not turning as well in the center of the corner, so he's having to use more brake, and uh, that could create another problem that he definitely doesn't need to happen. Back to the 24 car, Jeff Gordon. Let's listen in. 20, when I get to him, it is done. I didn't do a thing right there. He runs flat over me. That Is this your mark? Do your thing. Is your mark? Do your thing. If you have any trouble, remember, front stretch only. Okay, now what, what you heard Steve Letarte say, if you have any trouble, he is front stretch only. They're talking about coming down the pit road and not using both pit roads when you pit under green. That's in case he has a flat, not to lose all that time. That's happened to Jeff here before, where he's come down the wrong pit road and had to use the whole pit road front and back. Lost a ton of time. I talked to Steve about that this morning, and uh, that was their communication. They're going to say, okay, front stretch only under green. Probably on the heels of the rubbing and bumping incident we saw a little bit ago. We'll make sure if you have a problem, you know how to get there in a hurry. Kyle Busch has led 194 laps. Back in a moment. 